church and had their meds and everything and and, uh, and I said Lord I said you're gonna have to give me something I said you you, you know you give me all kinds of things to speak on but I need I need something you know you're gonna have to give me something so I sat down and I heard the words the door the door and I come to church and I find out that brother Jackson would preach on the same thing so <laughs> I just I didn't know that before I came to church <laughs> Uh, 1 through 13, yes. Oh. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. For the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Yet give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. The wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there be not enough for us. And you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. <coughs> they were ready when they went in to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. What's therefore? For you know neither the day nor the hour, when the Son of Man come. Amen. Yeah. You know, I was thinking this morning, uh, I got thinking this morning, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know who all saved here and who they are. I'm hoping everybody is. But, uh, he gave me a couple other scriptures along with that. One of them was Revelation 3 and 20. He said, I stand at the door and knock. Any man that, that would open the door, I will come in, him, come, come in and sup with him. And he with me. And, uh, and the, the other scripture they gave me was Genesis 7, 16, where it was talking about Noah as they as they entered the ark. He said he said that he shut the door. God shut that door, you know. And uh, I can't remember where it's at, but it says uh, there's a door that no man can open or no man can shut. I'm paraphrasing, but uh, you know. I got thinking, my, how many people would actually get left behind because that door would be shut and nobody could open it back up, you know? I don't want to be one of those people that 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 get left behind, you know? I, I don't, don't ask me why God gave me this. Maybe this is something somebody needs to hear. I really don't know. But uh, he put it on my heart to say that, you know, if you are not ready to meet God, if you're not ready to stand before God today, then you need to be up here. You need to be up here. If he's knocking at your heart's door today, you hear that knock, don't hesitate to get up from your seat and come up here. Because I tell you right now, I'll be one of them that will stand and pray with you and for you that you will receive God as your Savior. Or maybe you're backslidden. I don't know. I really don't. But if you are, you know, let us pray for you, you know, or, or you can stand your seat. It don't really matter. God meets you anywhere that you are. You know, it don't have to be at this altar. It could be in your seat. It could be in your car. It could be driving home. It could be in your bathroom. You know, it doesn't matter. God's going to meet you anywhere that, that you will allow Him to meet you. You know, just like opening that door. You've got to be the one to open that door. I don't think there's...
there's a picture of it in here anywhere, but there's a there's a picture that shows Jesus knocking at the door. If you notice on that picture, there's not a handle on the outside of that door. It's only on the inside. And that 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 knob is the one that we have to turn. That's right. Not God can't just force himself in there. He's got to knock. You know, it's just like if somebody walks up to your door, they can't just enter your home. You know, they gotta they gotta knock at the door. You gotta be the one to open the door to let them in. Same way with God. You know, you got you gotta be willing to open that door when you hear His knock and let Him in. You know, and uh, so this morning I'm gonna make it short and sweet. I'm really not gonna carry on. I promise you. But I uh, I just I just bid you to come. If you don't know Him this morning and you need to. Come on up here. Pray in your seat. It doesn't really matter. But it's on my heart this morning that if you don't know him, you need to. You know. And um, I'm glad that I know him. I'm glad that that I opened the door and let him in. You know, I was 14 years old. I've been saved for almost 20 years. I've not been perfect. And I'll be the first to tell you. I've made my mistakes. No, I've made my mistakes. I stood and I told uh, Bobby, um, come here and play the bass not too long ago. I can't think of his last name. Anyway, I stood and I told him over at Brother Hill's church, I said, I remember, I remember so vaguely, I mean, very, not vaguely, but very well, Bobby Wells, that's it, very well about the time that I came in and I was so full of the devil I couldn't even breathe. And I said, I had had to be the one to open that door to be the lift. Yeah. You know? And uh, I said, but you know what? I said, it wasn't very long after that that I had went and I turned my back on God. I ran away from Him. And I couldn't tell you the, the numerous amount of times. I said, probably about once a month or once every couple of months, you'd see me in church, you know? And, and uh, I said, I never was straight. I was either high or I was drunk, one of the two. You know, I never, I never went to church straight in that four years. And I said, but you know, I said it took God using Brother Tex. He was talking about Brother Tex this morning. We used to call him Papa when he was in the church over there. And, uh, and uh, he asked me to come forward. And of course, being obedient, because I know he was a man of God, I had to be obedient. And I went forward. And he told me one thing. He said, you're going to give birth to a baby in a, in a year. I looked at him and I told him he was crazy. And then a year and a half later, I found out that I was pregnant. Three months before she was born, I found out I was pregnant. And, uh, but you know what? It was through God using many people, like Brother Tex, my own daughter, and many other people that has prayed for me to where God actually dealt with me one last time. Because I didn't think He was going to give me another chance. You know, and I don't want somebody else to, 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 sit here this morning and just put him off and put him off and put him off. Don't put him off because the longer you put him off, <coughs> you, you just don't know. You don't know when your number's up. You know, I didn't know when mine was going to be up. Thank God it's, you know, it wasn't up. Thank God he gave me another chance. You know? But don't just, don't just put it off. You know, if, if you don't know him this morning, or maybe, maybe you have a family member you want to see saved and you want to pray about it, do it. You know, take, take, Take this word to them and tell them, you know, hey, you may not have another chance to, to come and know God, you know. And uh, and pray that, you know, God will knock on their hearts for just one more time, you know, that they will actually be obedient and hinder to Him, or heed to Him, I should say. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got. I love y'all. I love the Lord. And uh, like I said, if you don't know Him this morning, I'll be glad to pray with you or for you. If you need prayer, so I love y'all.